Hi, we're in the next part now. Um, come on, man. Ish. Oh, no. Hi, guys. Sorry, we're in the next part. I don't know. This phone young boy as well. I just wish my iPhone was working properly. And it, it's also so hot right now that it might just stop recording. So I don't know what's going on. I hope to get this message out anyway uh, before we are done. Yeah, here it is that uh, the, the Lord was showing me that people... Nah, go check out the previous part to gauge your bearings. He was showing me uh, that people were in, like, uh, people in seniority, like executive levels, were doing strange stuff. The weirdness of activity at MTN at that time in terms of business choices. Yes, like it, guys. Some of the like best employees in the organization were quitting their jobs, like a skills exodus, do you understand? Because they applied for a position as a senior manager or an executive or whatever. And some Barbie doll, some like Ken doll, some Namby Pamby fluffy cabbage rolling around with just its head and gym got the job and nobody got it. Like nobody would and it's like weird stuff was happening. People were being retrenched that were important and key for the company. It was not only a skills exodus of really good people but also a laying off in the section 189 of really great skills and the people who were being laid off uh, I want to like touch up my lipstick now even though my hands are oily the people who were being laid off it was a shock because they'd also been working for M10 for a very long amount of time and they were expecting to be favored because of that you know like longevity in the organization their loyalty they just easily got rid of them and the people that uh, got the job above them that were favored above them yo guys some of the uh, one particular case was so taboo the dude started out at mtn working there having been a graduate okay like he was fresh out of university and within two years he had become a senior business analyst and within another year from that date he succeeded to get a promotion as a senior manager above three or four other guys who were vying for the same position who had done the time and gotten the qualifications prior to him. He just miraculously got that job. Despite basically being a baby. He could have literally still been in his diapers in terms of a, a, a career in corporate. And he got made a senior manager. Yeah. That was a weird, 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 weird appointment. But there were many other such weird appointments happening all over the show. We would imagine that certain dudes, of course, like it's in the ground, it's pegged, man. This dude is going to be the one to get this particular job with the new restructure. And then some woman would rock up that we all understood to basically be fumbling around over her words every time she does a PowerPoint presentation. We don't know what her true skill uh, is because nobody has ever actually truly seen her work. And yet she got the job, the promotion. Get GM now. Get executive. Yo, guys, weird things were happening at MTN under everybody's noses. Staff was lamenting on the ground that were complaining, but I mean, magic was happening. Abantaba Twele were running MTN. People that were running an occult secret society in the organization were running MTN and they were, uh, what is this? Each other. They were promoting each other. Now, understand that these things are being shown to me as this random program slash project manager. I'm just some like, whatever, employee, you know, nothing hectic. I wasn't at a senior enough level for me to be a person of interest to any of these people, like even in the slightest. And yet, here it is that God Almighty was showing me the wickedness of my organization, the leadership there. I remember one guy got promoted to CEO, right? Uzunate Grancha Bulbulia, I shall speak of him because he didn't really do anything to me other than capitulate to darkness. Zunate was the CFO ne, of uh, finance uh, M, uh, of uh, King MTN SA. He was the chief financial officer of MTN South Africa for a couple of years, and during the time when he was the CFO, the, the chief financial officer. He was so beloved, guys. He was such a jocose, lighthearted man on his feet. Every time he would see you, even though he doesn't know you, he would just, like, drop a joke. He was one of those comedic uh, geniuses. Like, you know, um, somebody that you could tell in Jafela was, was just a ball of, like, energy. Very, very um, comedic. And they just so happened to end up a very serious man in a big job. But he's still, like, a Popeye. Yeah, that was Junaid Populia. He was a Popeye. But a, he was beloved. And he was intelligent. He was really good at what he did. He had a way about people. Okay? Yeah. Zunaidi got promoted. He uh, applied when the CEO positions got made available. Because there was, like, such a... There was so much evil in MTN that it was uprooting positions. And it was putting people up. And there was a lot of instability, basically, at that time. I don't know if it has ever since then maintained its position. 
anyway, whatever. Uh, and so a whole bunch of CEOs had been laid off and others like replaced and they were going through just a hard knock time. MTN was basically, so its product initially was just selling itself because the company was starting, but then the market was starting to get saturated. And so now we needed innovation. And so people's jobs were not so secure anymore. The company was not making as much anymore, blah, 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 etc. So they kept on like reshuffling, 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 changing, seeing if they can't get a new board on board, uh, blah, blah, blah. Stuff like that was happening at that time. Okay. And uh, Zunaid, uh, being a CFO and a very good one, and also so beloved by the people, uh, applied for the job for CEO, or maybe he was, what is the word, shortlisted, I don't know, what is the word um, that I'm looking for when they go for you, they want you directly, um, he was uh, like earhead, earmarked, spearheaded, well, not spearheaded, what are they, what's that word, headhunted, yeah, maybe he was headhunted, I don't know, but because he was really good, so I can I can see how he would have gotten headhunted. Anyway, he was given, he, he successfully became the CEO, and when he became CEO, many of us were happy because we liked the guy. He was absolutely lovable, like one of those Jocko's men, like I said, like, yeah, you know, like that teacher that's doing... Um, that dance on TikTok right now, that South African teacher, she's a teacher and she did like a dance to Amat Piano and she be, she went all viral. She, he was like kind of a CEO, like he was a person in authority, but the staff on the ground loved him. It was like the kids dancing around the teacher. That was Zunaid, a person with that kind of personality. He became CEO, successfully applied for that job, I guess, and got it. And he changed, guys. He changed, like his entire constitution changed. When he was walking around the building, he would just greet you out of the blue Njefela. He did not have a classist thing about him. He would talk to the staff in the canteen, all the way down to the staff that clean, all the way up to the executives, all the way down up to like that, to the middle management, like whoever you were. He would have a conversation with you and you would feel like you're talking. Like sometimes you would even be shocked that he well, he's the CFO because he spoke to you in the lift. And when you get to your your seat, your office as a new employee, you realize, oh my goodness, he's the CFO. That's the kind of dude that Zunaid was. As soon as he became CEO, watch he stopped greeting. He was walking around in the office. He was no longer the same man. Something changed about that man like overnight. Overnight, in a way that was feelable, we could sense it, guys. Yo, he, well, he was not the kind of man that we, we had to kind of tiptoe around. He was not himself. He was not himself. That's the thing about getting recruited into a secret society. When you're really clever, you're really smart, you're good at what you do. And then next thing, um, they say, hey, we have a really great opportunity for you. And then they put you through some strange rituals and they change who you are altogether. The person that comes out on the other side is a different man altogether. He was changed. He was different. I'm not saying he successfully got recruited into a secret society. But one thing that the Lord did show me about him is that now, like he came into the position as CEO. And he had these bright ideas as to what he wanted to do to like flip the organization. And the Lord showed me that he can't do what he wanted to do. It's like a, a, a person uh, campaigning for being president. And you've got these ideas about how you're going to build a school here. You're going to correct this electrical infrastructure. But as soon as you are now president, as soon as you are now king of your land, they then tell you, no, you're not going to build a school. What you're going to do is funnel these funds to this particular public sector organization in order to make it grow. Because we've got somebody there that belongs to a bigger organization that needs to be benefited by this project. So you end up the, the bright eyed and bushy tailed ideas of what you had about this organization and what you wanted to do are no longer going to be fulfilled. Your dreams and your goals, you realize that whatever it is that you signed on the dotted line was not so much the your, your future as an organization leader, but your soul. He realized that whatever deal he had entered into, they were now telling him what to do. He couldn't even crack a whip over his own executives. He could not tell them what to do. They were all doing something, and if you disagreed with the agenda, it was over with you. I remember one executive boldly saying in a meeting that, don't tell me about Zunaid. I uh, want to do this. Zunaid was his boss. And he said in a meeting to every one of us in the room, when we were like, when we were saying, but Zunaid said that this is what he wants to do for the organization. He was the organ, he was a, a CEO. And he was like, don't come tell me about Zunaid. He's subordinate. He, they all did some, they were doing something that some loftier people wanted them to do. Next part.